Boltworks Today is a viewer-supported show. To learn more on how you can get involved and watch extended ad-free versions of these videos, please visit our website, boltworkstoday.com, and click on the top of the heading where it says support this show. Thank you. So welcome back, everybody. I hope you're doing well. My name is Andy with Boltworks Today, and this week I'm really hoping to be able to get the glasswork finished up around this locker area because... Well, I'm ready to move on to a different aspect of this boat. Now, if you're new to this channel, the, what I'm working on here, it's a 1972 Bertram Moppy 25 that I picked up about eight years ago. And it's been on stall, for, you know, up until, up until this point. But the, the reason I'm, try, I'm trying to do this is, well, one, I haven't been out on the water in 15 years. I went from living on a boat to not even leaving the harbor in over 15 years. And more importantly, or even more sad, is my girls, what, they're six and nine, they've never been out on this lake. Ever. That's just super sad given you know the nature of the work that I do so I'm trying to fix that but with that said let's jump into this project. Now just as a quick refresher if you remember from the past couple of videos the the insert that you see here this was something that we made around a mold uh, from a cutoff piece uh, from this actual uh, locker area. So built that wrapped it in place and then this most recent video we went through and did all the tabbing all along the bottom as well as well tied it in with epoxy along the top. Now this is not uh, finished obviously and there's still a bit of cleanup to do. Now these little spots that you see here and kind of all around the uh, I guess the, the the main face of this insert this is all hot glue that was left over from when I, when I was actually uh, fabricating this. So there's a fair amount of cleanup that needs to get done. All these uh, old glue scot spots need to be removed, as well as I need to kind of touch up the taper all along this bottom edge. Now I did grind this down to a, a real fine edge, but there's still a little bit of a lip here. So I'm gonna need to, uh, I guess, kind of feather this in with some thickened epoxy before I can actually start coming in and laying in the tabbing along the top, as well as building up the thickness all around this insert. And for this prep work, I'm going to be using the RAS 115 made by Festool using a 36 grit sanding disc. So hopefully this will make pretty quick work of everything. So I got all the glass cut for building up that uh, insert around the, the helm area here. So I've got, uh, in total, there's going to be two layers of uh, this 11 inch wide stuff. And then another single layer all the way around of the 13 inch wide. And then finally, a single layer of the 15 inch all the way around. So as you can see here, I've got everything prepped. I've got my silica over here for thickening up and a couple gallons of resin. And hopefully, I've got enough resin. So getting down to the area of interest here. Now, as you've seen, all this has already been sanded and wiped down and cleaned and everything ready to go. But hopefully the camera's gonna pick this up. But if you look at some of the glass in here, uh, you know, there are areas, there's, there's high spots that have been knocked down, there's low spots that have not. And in particular, up around this top edge, you know, even though I tried to grind this down to as fine of a point as I could, uh, there's still a little bit of a lip, you know, underneath here. So what I'm gonna do first, just to make sure that I have good adhesion with all of the glass, is I'm gonna mix up some thickened epoxy, and I'm gonna be thickening this with the, uh, the silica or the, the Total Boat uh, Silica Thickener. And again, like before, I'm gonna be using the Total Boat, their two to one epoxy. But I'm gonna mix up some thickened epoxy to eh, a, kind of a loose peanut butter consistency. And then using a trowel, I'm gonna come in and just kind of give a kind of a skim coat over basically all of the surfaces around this locker to include trying to build up a little bit of a ramp right along this edge so that there isn't gonna be such a, a hump uh, for the glass to have to conform to. And then the first two layers of glass that I'm gonna be laying down are 11 inches wide. And again, this is all 1708. 
But the first two layers of glass are going to extend from basically the top edge right here down to the very bottom, you know, where it starts to radius down. And kind of what I'm, the reason I'm doing that is because I want to build this surface up right here just a little bit to be a little bit closer in, in uh, I guess, in reveal to this top edge. So then the, the third and the fourth layers of glass aren't really going to have to any kind of a, a bump that they're going to have to conform to. It should be built up enough to where the, the, the third and the fourth layers should just kind of come right up and, uh, you know. Going into this, I guess initially what my plan is, is to lay basically two layers of 1708 that are going to be essentially going from this lip down to this bottom radius here. Now if I'm able to get away with just doing one layer of 1708 and it'll give me enough build where I'll actually be, you know, kind of close to meeting up to this top, top lip here, uh, then that's what I'm going to do. But I'm planning on having to do two, but if I can get away with one, that would be awesome. Now since there's a, a, a light skim coat of thickened epoxy on here already, I'm going to see if I can use this to my advantage to, uh, to kind of hold this glass in place without it uh, getting too crazy on me here. And I think I may need to cut this. <laughs> So as luck would have it, uh, the camera or the battery for this camera uh, happened to die as soon as I started wetting out the glass. But I've got the uh, the first layer down. I'm a little light on resin uh, once we start getting over to this point, just because I well I need to mix up another batch. But I didn't want to do that until I was able to put a, f a somewhat fresh card back in here so I can start recording. So uh, let me mix up some more resin, and then we're going to have to go around with the fin roller to get out some of this air. So. And I think I'm just going to start jumping up in size so I can uh, start getting the, the tabbing, or at least tying this, into with this. So I think I'm going to skip this next uh, 11 inch wide and go right to, I think it's 13 inch, 13 and then 15 inch. So let me go grab those rolls, and uh, now I suspect that this layer is going to be a little bit more squirrely for me here. It would be cool if I could keep this all one continuous run, but I don't know if that's going to be possible. And 1708 is pretty forgiving to work with, but only to a point. All right, well, I think I'm just going to roll with it, see how this goes. I've got a, a nice even reveal all the way around and down. And it seems like everything kind of came into place, so let's start wetting it out. And I'm going to be pretty liberal with the, uh, with the epoxy here, just because uh, I can come back after I get this layer down, I can come back with the fin roller and work out any of the excess when I'm trying to chase the air bubbles out.
So in, in this corner through here, the, uh, the, the glass was kind of bridging a little bit. It wasn't you know, nice and, and solid against, against his back. So before everything is wetted out, what I can do to try and shift it and make it work a little bit better is I can grab up in here and just kind of push and it, it eases the weave of the glass a little bit and kind of helps to push some in here. And if I come at it from this direction, I'm able to do the same thing, kind of push a little bit uh, of the weave back into this corner. So now I've got good solid contact in this, uh, in this corner. Which is good. <laughs> All right, so let's get this stuff out, or wet it out. Whenever I have a big tray of epoxy sit or a big yeah big tray of epoxy sitting around, uh, it, it kind of lights a fire under you. You want to get the stuff rolled out as quickly as you can. <laughs> Sweaty hands, new glove, the battle is real. So good morning. It has been a little over 24 hours since all of this was laid up. The epoxy has set like a champ and it is just strong as strong can be. But coming in for a little bit of a closer look here. Uh, now obviously there's, there's going to be some fairing that's going to be involved because uh, it's, it's not perfectly flat, you know, certainly not perfectly flat all the way around. But overall I got to say I am pretty happy with how this, uh, how this turned out. Uh, I, for the most part I don't see any air bubbles trapped in here. I mean Nothing is ever 100% perfect, uh, but this, uh, this looks pretty good to me. Now, if you're picking up on this uh, on, uh, on the computer screen, there are some areas like right in here where you can start to see some white. And while this does look like trapped air, if you remember before we actually started laying the glass, the first thing I did is I came through and I put a, a skim coat of the thickened epoxy using the silica. Well, when you add silica to the epoxy, it, it turns it white. So the areas that you're seeing on here that kind of look like white blotches, that's actually little areas where the, uh, the, the thickened epoxy kind of filled in, whether they were old screw holes or, you know, whatever they, or low spots, whatever they may happen to be. But for the most part, that's what most of these low spots are. Like I said, there are some, you know, still little air pockets here and there, but they're, uh, they're pinholes or, you know, pin size. So, I am not worried about that at all, and like, I, like I've said many times before, this is not a structural piece, this is strictly uh, more or less a, a finishing aspect. Because well, like I said, I want this locker to be uh, a nice looking locker when it's all said and done. So when you open it up, you kind of look down and you say, ah, yeah, that looks nice. <laughs> so that's kind of the whole goal. Now there's still going to be a little bit of trimming involved up on top because some of these are, these little pokies are still sticking up a little bit proud. But that's easy peasy. That's just going to be a matter of going over with the sander and knocking all that down and rounding, and rounding this edge back over. Now there was, there is one little spot right here and I got to be careful because I've already jabbed myself once and kind of, well, I jabbed myself pretty good right underneath the fingernail, which was no bueno. But this area right through here, for whatever reason, the, the last layer of glass that I did when I was wrapping this around, it just kind of buckled right here. Now this, that last layer, was the only layer that did this. Uh, if you go over towards this other starboard side, you know, this all laid in really, really nice. All three, all three layers kind of did exactly what I was hoping they would do. This one, well, this one wanted to decide it wanted to be the problem child. That is not going to be a big deal. That's going to be a matter of hitting it with the belt sander, knocking off all those little jaggedy pieces that are sticking up. And if I really 
you know, get a little uh, hair up my, mm -hmm, um, I can just throw another quick little patch of uh, 1708 over top of that and no one will be none the wiser as far as, you know, knowing that that had ever had to be touched up. So, oh, all in all, like I said, yeah, all in all, I gotta say I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. And, strong like a bull. So now, before wrapping up this video, one last thing I wanna talk about, just because I know it's gonna be coming up as a question, is why I was using these particular, these little cigar rollers for doing glass work. Now, if you remember, I think the first time I started playing around with these was when I was doing the, the paint demonstrations using the Alexio paints, and these things work fantastic for paint. Now, one thing I have noticed while using these rollers, uh, say working with resin, is that they don't hold a lot of material, which uh, with paint, that's a good thing, but when you're trying to wet out large areas, that may not be the most desirable uh, aspect of a roller that you're looking for, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, it does have some advantages going for it as well. Now, typically, the style of uh, roller that you see people use are like, you know, these, these type. You know, the, they fit over top of a barrel frame and, well, boom. The now, the big downside of these big, you know, quarter inch or, or three eighths or half inch nap rollers is that, yeah, they, they hold on to a lot of resin, but what happens is that, you know, as if you're, especially if you're gonna be using the same roller for multiple batches or multiple mixtures of either polyester or epoxy resins, because this roller holds on to so much material, it starts to actually build up heat and start to cure faster than the resin that you're rolling out. So eventually, the resin that's on these, uh, on these uh, rollers it actually will cure on the actual frame itself. And once that happens, good luck taking it off. Uh, there's a reason <laughs> this particular frame is brand new. is because, uh, you know, about five, six times a year, I'll have a, I'll have a, a roller actually well, get stuck or weld itself onto the, onto the frame. And at that point, it's pretty much junk. Now, the advantage to these little cigar rollers, let me see if I can crack one out here. Now I've been using this particular frame for quite a while, I'm pretty much all, all summer long. Now again, these, they use these little cigar style uh, rollers. Now inside of here, it's a little plastic insert and with a little bearing of some sort, I'm guessing. Now there's no way that this can actually get, you know, even if you let the resin cure, there's no way that this is going to get stuck onto the frame because, well, epoxy doesn't stick to plastic very well. So it'd be a matter of just basically giving this a quick little turn, breaking the seal, and it pops right off. Now, like I said, the advantage, or the, the disadvantage for these style rollers is that they don't hold a lot of material, but because they don't hold a lot of material, they, you get a lot more usable time out of this before, it, before the resin that is on here actually starts to harden and basically render this thing junk. So, is it the, uh, is it the best roller for wetting out large areas? Well, I don't know. I, I, I suppose, uh, you know, to each their own. Uh, I like it. It is a little bit tedious having to go back and constantly, you know, load back up in the, uh, in the roller pan. But, you know, for, for being able to save the, on the cost of the materials, and uh, you know, have really good control as far as where you're able to push the, uh, push the resin. I personally think that it's worth it. And if, uh, if, I don't know if you noticed, but in the, uh, towards the end of this last video, some of the, the last roller or some of the last rolling strokes that I was doing, what I was doing is actually holding onto this pretty hard and pushing fairly hard against the, the wet glass. And if you noticed, the roller, because this is it, such a short nap, you can actually use it somewhat like a fin roller. I mean, it, I slowed the section down there towards the end where you could actually see this roller actually pushing the air and the excess resin up and out of the laminate. So it just, it, it, it works out really, really well. Again, like I said, is it perfect? No, but is really anything? No. So with that said, I think I'm gonna wrap up this video because I, like I said, I'm excited to move on to next week where we're gonna actually start breaking out the Kusa and playing around with that, building out this actual new landing area in the cockpit. So as a, I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell. I'd love to have you on board. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, you can leave those down below. And as always, thank you for your time. 
and thanks for watching. This has been a Bootworks Today Protection.